Just about everyone wants to catch a big flathead, including me, with the metre mark being the magical target for all anglers. So for those of us who aspire to catch a trophy flathead, just where should we start and where should we go to do it? Well, it's pretty simple. Big flathead live in our coastal estuaries and bays along the eastern and southern coast of Australia. It is here that there are three main species that inhabit these waters. The dusky, the blue spotted flatheads and the sand flatheads. Dusky flathead inhabit the whole of the east coast of Australia, from northern Queensland all the way around to southeastern Victoria. The eastern blue spotted flathead inhabits the waters off the east coast of New South Wales and southern Queensland. And the southern blue spotted flathead live in the bays and estuaries along the Victorian, South Australian and West Australian coastlines. The northern sand flathead lives in the bays and estuaries off the Queensland coast and the southern sand flathead lives in the bays and estuaries of Victoria, Tasmania and the eastern portion of South Australia. A couple of different tactics you can use for, for flathead. One thing I always try to work out is uh, drifting across the flats. You cast with the wind, work your bait, or do you cast against the wind, just work your bait gently with it. Obviously when you're just um, sitting back up wind and then just pulling your soft plastic back, you really don't need to retrieve or work it much at all. Best lure for me, I find uh, changes all day. At the moment the conditions are fairly overcast but very glary and the fish seem to have gone on to really bright colours. Nuclear chicken is uh, quite a hot colour at the moment. Having said all that, I probably just mainly use squidgies or Berkeley power bait or gulp. I've been trying out the new um, Plano boxes which you can just put your soft plastics in obviously the Berkeley um, the Berkeley gulp comes in its own liquid squidgies likewise you have a bit of s factor in that as well so makes it nice and easy to use keeps it neat and tidy at hand and um, easy to use My heavier outfit, four to eight pound, I just used four pound fins on it. That's a, that's a great a great choice for big flathead, four pound fins. I've actually got probably about a 15 pound leader on this one. and So I'm gonna use this five inch Berkeley Gulp Minnow, pink. This is a top flathead color. Where I fish along the eastern coast of Victoria, Anglers are lucky enough to have the only two maxi flathead that inhabit our estuaries, the dusky and the southern blue spotted flathead. Both are reputed to grow to over a metre. So when you're fishing these waters, where a number of these species could be present, just how do you tell the difference? Well firstly, sand flathead average only around 25 to 30 centimetres and rarely exceed 50. They are an aggressive fish and represent a large proportion of the flathead caught in the areas where they inhabit. They are easily distinguished from other species of flathead in that their lower gill spine is significantly longer than their upper, up to about two and a half times in length. On their tail, look for a number of spots, up to four to five different spots on the tail. Their general appearance is of a sandy colour and they do lack the spotting that the duskies and the blue spotted flathead exhibit. Of the blue spotted flathead there are two species, the eastern blue spotted flathead and the southern blue spotted flathead. The eastern blue spotted flathead rarely achieves a length over 45 centimetres, but it's with the southern blue spotted flathead that we get into some interesting action, because these fellas can grow to a metre. How do you distinguish a blue spotted flathead from a dusky? With both species of blue spotted flathead, the gill spikes too show a little bit of a difference. 
The lower spike on the Southern Blue Spotted Flathead is always slightly longer than the upper spike. The caudal fin or tail too shows the difference where there are three distinct bars on the tail. Generally speaking, the Southern Blue Spotted Flathead is darker than the Sand Flathead and exhibits a very distinctive pattern of white spotting all over the body. The Dusky Flathead is easily Australia's best known flathead. They also happen to be our biggest flathead, easily exceeding a metre when you can find a big one. These large fish are always females and should be released. They are distinguished from other flathead in a number of ways. Firstly, their gill spikes are of equal length. Secondly, their caudal fin or tail fin, they just exhibit the one spot on the tail fin. Generally, their coloration is darker than the other two species of flathead. And while they do exhibit some white dots, they are not as prominent as those on the southern blue spotted flathead. Quarry there. Bloody. There we go. Our flu spotted. We'll just have a look at this. There we go. And yep, that's a big one, but it's certainly a uh, blue spotted flathead. And these are the guys that rival a dusky for size. These guys will get up to four or five kilos as well. The only, only one or two flathead in Australia that reach that sort of size. And hope to be handling quite a few flathead today. So the gloves are just a bit of an insurance policy. The easiest way to tell the difference between one of these and a dusky flathead, apart from the fact that these are a lighter colour all over, is the three dark blotches on the tail side of the tail. And there they are there. Obviously I've got the flathead upside down so it looks like it's on the top, but they're actually, as you can see, on the underside of the tail. So we'll just unhook this guy and let him go. He's not quite the size we're looking for, but I'm sure we'll get a few more as the day goes on. like it's sand flatted to me. The difference with it's sandy is the lower spike here is about three times longer than the upper spike and no spots on the tail. And he has absolutely inhaled this. Well you can see what he's done to this fat grub, six inch Berkeley fat grub in uh, nuclear chicken colour. Just absolutely smashed it. Maybe that's going to produce the goods for us. Nice flathead. Yeah, he's alright. I just changed colours. I put a, a red squidgy on. Immediately. Nice bite. Classic yank flooded. Blue spot. You can just see the blue spots there on him. This is what just got him on. Just a four inch um, squidgy shad. And red rum, the colour. Nice fish. Whatever. This looks like it's alright. Oh yeah, this is a nice size flatty. That's got him. Now that I suspect is a very nice southern blue spotted flathead, which it is, yes. Or a yank, as we call them down here in in Victoria. We're in corner inlet. And that's what we're after. Australia's second biggest flathead behind the dusky. It's a southern blue spotted flathead or a yank flathead. And they also grow to about a metre. This one's probably 650 millimetres. You can see these white spots all over the flathead. That distinguishes the uh, southern blue spotted flathead here in Victoria. The other difference is the, um, the difference in the length of the spikes. Dusky flatheads are about the same length. The blue spotted, the lower spike is just a little bit longer than the upper, 
and in the sand flathead, the lower spike is far longer than the other one, so it's a pretty easy way to tell. Now in an estuary system like this in Corner Inlet, you're not going to get many duskies. All the big ones are going to be these southern blue spotted flathead. Just a bit out of the range for dusky flathead. I'll just get this soft plastic out. And there we go. Now there's a typical little, little soft plastic. That's a little Storm Pro Slug. I put that on because we went into fishing very, very shallow water. Went down in jig size to one eighth and up to one over to very fine shank hook. That just proved his undoing. I think these little slugs in the shallows obviously present the right profile for what these flathead are after. So we'll get this, get this girl back in the water and let her go. So if you're looking for your big southern blue spotted flathead, try these pristine sand flats on Corner Inlet. It's a great place to fish and on a good day like this, there's just nothing better. But unfortunately, you're not going to get your big dusky there. To get a big dusky, you're going to have to move further east, at least to Gippsland Lakes, but really further on. And my preference is to try my luck at Malakuta Inlet. And wouldn't you know it, using brim gear, right at the end of the day, a big thunderstorm about to hit us, I've gone and hooked the biggest dusky flathead of my career. Time for a few quick picks for the album, get it back in the water. What a great end to my search for a metre flathead. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.